Hey guys, Ornlu back with another map guide for the new maps in the map pool. Next up will be Islands. I mean, it's not a new map by any means. I mean, none of these maps are like new, new, except for Golden Swamp, uh, really just Golden Swamp. Uh, but it is new to the map pool, and some people not might not know how the water maps work or how to play them exactly, or how does islands differ from other water maps that they are more familiar with. So, let's get back into single player. Oh, yeah. Do, do uh, that. There we go. And turn the map to I lands. It starts with the letter I. Oh, hey, even landed Vikings. So pro. Okay, so here is Islands, the default DE version of Islands. You might have seen some variations of the map in tournaments. Uh, like, I know Hidden Cup had a, a variation. Um, so long as the distribution of trees is even, it can be a very fun map. You can see that there's a lot more open water, open space in general compared to Team Islands, where you just kind of have two big rectangles if you follow my cursor here. So you have more space with which to work, which means that the sort of greedier options become a lot more possible, like Vikings here. You go for some back docks, you back dock over here, you have four deep fish available to you, that's perfect. Just go FC Longboats yeah. and, uh, you know, have a, have a good old time. Same thing here, you have to be kind of uh, aware of where your island is, where you can hopefully find some deep water, but if uh, good old... Tortilla, the Ostrogoth. No, it's Tortilla, the Ostrogoth. <laughs> um, like, built his docks over here. That would definitely be ideal. Lots and lots of deep space, or deep water and fish to use. Also, it means that the more aggressive water sieves, like, say, your uh, Persians, Mongols, that sort of thing, I wouldn't recommend them as much on this map. And definitely, I mean, you can always go with Italians and Japanese. They will always be the safest choices. But you also can get away with Vikings. And I think if you're feeling really bold, you can go for a Portuguese uh, option, a Berber option, or a Byzantine option. And they're all going to be pretty good. Oh, Koreans as well. I think Doubt actually picked Koreans on islands in a... Uh, at NAC3. And I want to mention Berbers because on this exact map when I played Invisible Cup, which is a tournament for uh, not quite pros, but still okay-ish players, um, and I got clobbered by Vic Dench, who picked Berbers on this map. What he did is he backdocked, you know, he had a similar setup to this, and then he just went galleys. And then because of the Berber faster moving ships, my fire galleys couldn't do anything. It was just... I was getting microed down all day long because the galleys would just dart away from me at every opportunity. He ended up with like 18 kills to zero deaths, and I got absolutely clapped. So the point I'm trying to make here is that you can be a little bit greedier and get away with it. Don't be too greedy and then uh, just die to random ships, but you can be a little bit more adventurous, I would say. Let me just load up the team game. Never mind, this isn't in the team game map pool. Whoops. So this one, again, I kind of already went over the sieves. I would say your safest bets are going to be Vikings, Japanese, and Italians. They're even right next to each other, how convenient. Vikings, if you want to be a little bit greedier, um, but they do play differently to the, these two. So you, you're going to have to be a little bit more careful. Uh, if you're playing Vikings. Italians and Japanese, you can just sort of slot them into any water map and they'll be great. But then, of course, like I was saying, uh, Berbers can be good as well if you've got the micro chops for it. Uh, Byzantines here with their faster firing fire ships. Uh are also legitimately strong. Also, the cheap Imperial Age can be a really big boost in uh, mid-game, as this is definitely a map that is more inclined to go late-game. 
and Portuguese. Uh, with that gold discount is nice. And then on any map, like islands, wood is very limited because you want a lot of it for ships. And you it runs out fast because there's just not as much land for there to be trees that you can chop. Fatorias are legit, guys. If you play, pick Portuguese, just sit back and wait for the map to run out of wood. Then you just plop down some Fatorias and just chill while you just get a uh, endless wood generation. And remember, Fatorias got buffed not too long ago. It's it's actually a legitimate thing to do. Now, of course, that is a very sort of slow play style, and it's not like you aren't you don't need to go for the Fatorias. It's more of just like you have the Fatorias as a you know your ace in the hole if the it looks to be going into a bit of a stalemate. But also, uh, one last thing about the map before I end this video is... Oh, whoops. You can see here the middle two islands. They're going to be something you're going to fight over uh, quite a lot as it goes to like late castle age. Towers here can be deadly castles as well. Trebuchets on the islands can, uh, you know, attack the other, or from the mainland attacking the islands. What you'll get in a 1v1 is two islands in the middle. One of them will have two stone. The other one will have six gold, uh, separated into two tiles, or two piles, rather. And this is going to be your neutral gold and neutral stone. So obviously, if you have map control in the mid game, fight like wolves over these, you know, set up as many towers and castles as you can. Make sure you can mine those resources before they run out. Anyway, that will be it for this uh, Islands Guide. Definitely leave a like if you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next video.